Welcome everyone, my name is Rod and today I'm going to show you a basic technique that I use to create displacement maps within Blender for use within the image that you see on the screen here. This is a dragon egg inspired by the Game of Thrones uh, television series by HBO and everything that you see on this image here is actually generated by displacement map. It's not hand geometry, it's not textures, it's just displacement. So with that said, let's just open up a new project. Now a lot of you will have the default cube placed here in the center so if we just press A a couple of times until all things on the screen are selected and then just press X to delete them. We don't need them at this stage. Let me just turn my screen cast keys on. There we go. Now the basics of the displacement map that we saw on that previous dragon egg um, is just some very basic geometry. So let's just start by creating some scales. Now I started with a, a standard uh, flat plane and in order to actually set this up uh, just like dragon scales we actually had to, to rotate them and turn them into a diamond shape so we just press tab to go into edit mode and just hit rotate around the Z axis so just pressed R and then Z and 45 degrees so 45 and we also need to lengthen them a little bit so just from trial and error I found that about one and a half times so the, the Y length that's in this running in this direction seems to work nice for this. So again, we can just go scale S along the Y axis, Y, and then 1.5. Now we're going to actually use some subsurface modifiers on this just so that we can get in some nice smooth edges. But just with a basic plan like this, it's going to generate a rather strange ovoid circle if we don't add some additional geometry in here. So we're just going to subdivide it twice. Now, there's two ways you can do that. You can just press subdivide twice to put two extra cuts in, or we can just hit it the once and then come down to where it says number of cuts and just increase that to two. Okay, so now just tab out of edit mode and we'll just change over to our modifiers panel. And in here, the first thing we need to do, as this is a flat plane, and we actually want them to be nice and thick with some decent depth to them, is to actually, actually add a solidify modifier. So just select solidify. Now you'll notice here mine says thickness one centimeter. That's because I've actually under my scene tab I've actually got my blender set up to show units in metric. Um, most by default it actually shows us none and if we have a look at that under none it says it's 0.01. Uh, that's 0 0.01 blender units. So in this case we need it to be about 10 centimeters in depth. I found there's a nice depth for it for um, what we're doing. We actually need to slightly exaggerate the geometry. Um, that <coughs> excuse me, that generates a much better displacement map. So we'll make that 0.1 and just for now we'll just apply that straight away. We actually don't need to do anything more with that. So now once we've done that we'll add our subdivision surface or our subsurf modifier. And if we have a look at this you'll notice that it actually pulls everything to a point about the center of the actual scale itself. Now let's just increase our divisions here so that we can get some nice smooth edges. And for what we're wanting that's really not very useful. We lose a lot of the, the geometry and the, the, the depth of our actual object here in the underside here and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is just tab to go back into edit mode and we're going to add an, uh, just a single loop cut in here so that we can pull that hard edge there down near to the bottom so we can get a much more much more profile to it, a lot deeper curve to it. So just control R uh, on any of these here so that we bring up our purple loop cut line, click it once just to, to place it and then just drag it down near the bottom surface there and click it a second time to, to finalize that. So now if we just tab out of edit mode we've got a nice deep scale, it's got a nice profile to it. We've got a lot of nice curved geometry on the top and very little underneath because we're not going to see the underneath. Now you'll also notice that we've got some flat shading in here which we really don't want that either so just just click on the smooth button over here and that just smooths all of our normals out and makes it look really quite quite smooth. Now once we've done that since we're going to be tiling these scales we actually want to add a little bit of an offset to each of the scales so that we don't have them merging into one another. So again in edit mode just hit A a couple of times until you select all vertices and just move that up to about the origin 
and then we need to rotate that around the x-axis that's around this line here so in our side view we just go R to rotate X to lock it onto the x-axis and we'll just rotate that a little over a, a scale thickness itself uh, at the front up this front here and that's pretty much it for the basic scale so now if we just tab out of edit mode and go back into top view we're going to start applying some array modifiers uh, so let's just start with the first one and you'll notice that by default it's set to to array or replicate along the x-axis uh, that's one object width in this case that works quite nice we want to actually toggle them nice and close and we'll want about about six or seven uh, is a nice place to start so once we've actually set that uh, array up for for copying that geometry along our x-axis we need to now create our second overlapping scale so we can do that just by making sure that our first object here is selected uh, pressing shift D to duplicate and just offsetting a little bit and pulling it back a bit uh, so that it sits across that center join line now just to make sure that we've got that look pretty much how we want it we'll just go into wireframe mode so just press Z or you can come down and change it down here in, in our panel and let's just go back into wireframe mode there we go and we just want to bring it pretty close to the center line here so I'll just, just pull it across a little bit there there we go and as you can see we have very little geometry that's actually merging together there's a little bit here but um, for what wanting that's mostly on the underside so we're not going to be worried about that too greatly so that's our two layers or two rows of overlapping scales so now we need to add a, a second modifier to both of these objects uh, a second array modifier so that we can now replicate them in the y direction so again with the first object selected just going to add modifiers and add an array now as we saw before by default it actually comes up and is set to replicate along in the x-axis we don't want that one so we'll just set that to zero and from trial and error I've found that we actually only wanted about 0.3 um, not even not quite half of the actual depth of our object itself so we'll set our y-axis to 0.3 and as you can see that gives us our nice overlap like our second row of scales does there so once again we need about seven copies of that there we go and we need to do the same to that second object now so we'll just select uh, a new array modifier and we don't want it on the x-axis and we want it approximately 0.3 on the y-axis and seven replications and there we go we've got a nice array of scales there that looks quite nice as far as I'm concerned so we'll just hit A to unselect everything there now the next step that I used to, to set up our, our objects for displacement mapping was just to put a backplane behind it now this as I understand it is not necessary but I found that it gives a nice um, default or maximum depth uh, against the backplane so we just add another another plane here so shift A mesh plane and we'll just go into wireframe mode so that we can see what we're doing and let's just move our new plane over to about the center of our scales tap into edit mode and let's just scale it up so that it actually covers all of the scales in both in both directions in both the y direction and in the x direction let's just pull that over there there we go now we also need to make sure that this plane is actually below all of our scale geometry we don't want it actually intersecting so just pull it down a little bit so it sits underneath it there now one thing you may have noticed is that I've not unwrapped uh, UV unwrapped any of these objects I haven't applied any textures or materials uh, in this case we're just focusing on the geometry itself we don't actually need to worry about our textures and, and UV unwrapping or anything like that for our basic uh, geometry that we're going to displace map from now in order to have something to actually project our displacement map against we need a second plane and we can simply use our back plane and just just duplicate that and pull it above so we can just ensure that our back plane there is selected shift D to duplicate now we don't want to move it left or right or front and back along our x-axis or along our y-axis we only want to go up in the z-axis so you can actually now just press Z to lock it onto a z-axis only and then just simply drag it up to just above our geometry there okay that looks good 
just going back into top mode, top top view, we can see well, we can see our basic plane. We're now covering every, all of our geometry with our plane. Uh, it's still there, of course. Now, this last plane is the one that we do need to unwrap. Um, we actually do need to apply texture to this so that Blender knows how to actually map everything uh, when it generates its displacement map. Another key thing to remember, however, is at this point in time under the Cycles Renderer, displacement baking is not available. So we do need to change this over to Blender Internal. And we'll just open up our, our new panel here and change over to our UV editor. And in here we'll create a new texture. Mm. Let's just call it Displace Map. And we'll make it approximately 2048 by 1024. We want it a similar sort of aspect ratio to our actual geometry that we're going to be baking. And 2048, whilst not exact, is actually going to give us very little distortion in the final baked map. And just click on OK. Now once we have the new image, we back over on our geometry here, we can tap back into edit mode. And as long as our single plane that we're dealing with is selected, we can then press U to unwrap. And in this case, we're going to project from view to bounds. Now that's taking a top down view only, and it's going to map that in its entirety onto our, entirety onto our new texture that we've just created over here. So you project from view bounds. And as you can see, it fills up the entire object and the entire texture. So once we've done that, we can actually tab back out of edit mode and just leave our blank texture. And we'll change over to the the, uh, the camera tab. And if you scroll right the way down to the bottom, thank you. We'll see bake down the bottom here. <coughs> Excuse me again. Now, in this case, we're going to be baking our displacement map. We're going to, we want to normalize uh, all the objects just to be sure. And we're going to bake to the selected, selected to active. So bake all objects that we'll select up onto the last item we select, which is this top UV mapped plane. Now, we also need to sort of have a look and make note of approximately how many blender units there is between our mapping plane and all of our geometry. In this case, it's approximately half a blender unit, so just to be a, a little bit um, error on the side of caution, we'll actually make that one blender unit, just to be sure. And now all we need to do is select all of our geometry, and with the top plane selected, we can actually hit A a couple of times, to once to unselect, and second time to select everything. And you'll notice that it selects everything, and it still maintains that last object we had selected as the active object. Okay. So now that we've actually done that, we come back over to our bake panel over here and we just click on bake. Now we'll take a few minutes for this to bake the displacement map. Um, and a displacement map is simply a grayscale um, image that represents depth. Uh, you'll notice that the, the lighter the color, you'll actually be the higher or closer to the camera. Uh, the darker the color, the further away from, from the, the camera. Or if, if we're placing this on geometry, the deeper into the actual geometry that will actually displace. Um, now, what we have here is, is just a very basic uh, displacement map. You can now actually apply this directly back onto a plane and, and actually have it displace the geometry for you. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll actually just save a copy of this. We'll save it as an image, actually. Um, let's come over here to Tutorials, Displacement Baking, and we'll just call it Displacement Map. <coughs> okay, and just to show you the effect that that has on our geometry, we'll just open up a, a, a new panel here. And actually what we'll do is we'll just replicate or copy, duplicate I should say, this top plane since it's already UV mapped. So we'll just duplicate that and we'll move it across to our second panel. Now, in order to really see the displacement properly, we do need to greatly increase our geometry here. And we can do that under our modifiers panel by adding a subdivision modifier. Hang on, before we do that, let's just add some base geometry back in, say into tab, and let's go to oh, edit mode. Let's go to subdivide, and we'll give that about 10 cuts. And now when we actually add our subdivision modifier, we're not going to have too many curved edges to it. And we're going to really, <coughs> we're going to really bump the, the geometry up here. We're going to give it lots of cuts, just so that we can see 
exactly how the displacement placement map works. And as you can see, there's lots of geometry there. So now that we've actually got that geometry in place, we'll add a new modifier and a displace modifier. It's a new displacement. We want it under UV coordinates. And if we change over to our materials panel, make sure that we've got displace selected. We actually want an image since we just saved that image. And since it's already still in memory, we can actually select it directly from our list here. Now, as you can see, that gives us our basic geometry. Um, we may be able to smooth that off a bit more. Yes, if we just hit smooth, it will actually smooth that out. And under our displacement panel here, we can actually change the depth of this displacement or how strong the displacement is through the strength value here. Uh, one is the default, but if we say make that five, you'll notice we've got very, very deep displacement here. Um, and as you can see, it is actually displacing the, the geometry itself. It's not a, an in-camera effect or a lighting effect. This actually does modify and distort the geometry of the object itself. And we can see that quite clearly if we apply our subsurf modifier and then our displace modifier. Um, and with no modifiers now currently active, they're all been applied. If we tab into edit mode, you'll see that we now have lots and lots of distorted geometry. So that's the basis of how I created the displacement maps for use on my Dragon Egg. I hope you find that quite useful. I know when I did some research myself, there was lots of help on normal maps and on ambient occlusion maps, very little on creating your own displacement maps. And of course, just like the normal maps and the ambient occlusion maps, uh, your displacement map can also be used as a basis for generating textures if you want to uh, improve and, and add realistic textures to this. So anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope that uh, you find this useful. And please stay tuned and check back uh, on periodic intervals. I'll try and update uh, some new tutorials and some new how-tos on my channel here on YouTube. And hopefully we can uh, all learn a bit more. Thank you very much.